welcome to Painted Forest Art. Uh, today I'm going to be starting a project that is more fantasy than historically inspired, but it's going to be this uh, sort of standing stones design, although that's not really the final uh, design, that's just kind of my idea sketch, so I'm going to add a little bit more to it. Uh, but what really kind of inspired me with this is this fantastic green glass that I think is gorgeous and is going to look really magical forest-like. And what I want to do is um, not just have the stones be gray stones with designs, but have when light shines through the green glass, um, it's going to shine through the designs in the rocks and make it look like the rocks are sort of glowing from within. So that's the plan anyway, we'll see. Uh, but as usual, the first step is to size up the drawing to the size of the glass. All right, so I've gone ahead and set my really light sort of base lines, and then I'm going to be trying to put in these the background trees because those are going to be the most precise things on there everything else can kind of be fudged a little bit so stone circle is a very generic term for any human created roughly circular alignment of large stones uh, these stones in this instance are called megaliths, which the word simply means large stones, but in this context it's implied that the stones were shaped and or placed by people. Uh, most stone circles in Europe were created in the late Neolithic and early Bronze Ages, so around 5000 to 1000 BCE. There are other places in the world where people created stone circles, and if you're interested in circles or megaliths in general, I highly recommend going to the online megalithic portal, uh, and I'll put a link in the description below, and you can find uh, places near you. Uh, or if you want to stay on YouTube, watch Time Team, which is a show about archaeology in the British Isles. The largest concentration of standing stones in the world is Karnak in France, and there are some circles there, but mostly there are rows and lines of stones, and most of them seem to have been placed between about 4000 to 3000 BCE, although some may be older. Dating of standing stones is notoriously difficult, and the creation of standing stone monuments in Neolithic culture may have spread from that region. There are a few variations of stone circles. Uh, recumbent or axial circles have at least one of the large stones intentionally placed on its side. Um, sometimes within these there are also two tall standing stones, either flanking the stone that's laying down or placed opposite from it in the circle. Another type is concentric circles. Uh, these have two or more circles of stones set inside one another. All right, I'm going to start, as usual, with the layer closest to the viewer. Um, and you can't see it real well, but um, these things on the side are actually going to be two trees that are sort of framing this view. Uh, and they are going to be done in the style of this little painting that I did a long time ago um, and haven't framed up yet, but I might have to frame it. I always really liked it. Um, but this tree here with the leaves kind of like that. So that's what I'm going to try to do over around here. Now, people often think of henges when they think of stone circles, but henges are a specific kind of monument. Uh, they don't need to have stones at all. They can be made of wood, uh, but they also do need to have a ditch associated with them. So henges can have a stone circle, but most stone circles are not henges. Uh, I personally mostly like megalithic monuments for the look, uh, well, and because they're rocks. I mean, I didn't get a couple of geology degrees without being interested in rocks. But most people seem to find these monuments interesting because their purpose is so mysterious. I'm starting on the background net of sort of tree-like things. Um, and I've been debating whether to use black or white. I'm still not entirely sure, but I think I'm gonna go with black because there is quite a bit of white in the glass itself. And this looks really dark, but that's actually just 
glass that doesn't have light going through it. So this is one of those that's going to look really, really different uh, based on how much light is shining from behind the piece. Uh, many alignments of megaliths seem to have something to do with celestial bodies. They line up with specific stars or phases of the moon or sun, so they may be some sort of calendar. Some also have evidence of burials, such as bone, well-made tools, or burning. Because of these, most archaeologists think they were erected for ritual purpose. Uh, but some people also think that these monuments may have been set up for sports or games, uh, much like coliseums or sports stadiums today are very large um, architecture. Now, I did not come up with this layering of leaves idea at all. Um, I saw it once in a... I believe it was ancient Persian uh, painting of a tree, and I thought it was a really neat effect. I don't know how many other painters do this, but I mixed way too much of this light green. All right, so now I'm doing the backside of the uh, first pane of glass. This is reverse painting. So what I'm painting now is going to be sandwiched in between the stuff that's already painted and the stuff I'm going to paint later. You'll see. Well, shoot. I just realized that I hadn't been recording any of the stuff I just did, including all the ferns and fairy rings and all kinds of stuff. But to make up for it, my cat has come to help me. This is Hammy, and he is helping by sniffing all of my paint and using the comb thing. And are you gonna come help? Just by clawing my leg. Hi. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Now. There we go. Take your claws out of my leg. I like doing little ferns. They're pretty easy. Just a whole bunch of little lines. However, I think honestly that trying to find one unifying reason that people built these things is rather ridiculous. Even if you narrow your criteria to just stone circles, they were still built by hundreds of different cultures over thousands of years and thousands of square miles. Most likely they were started because of some need or fashion in the culture, and their function and design changed many times as the concept evolved and those needs changed. So to add depths to the leaves, I'm just going to keep adding darker layers of leaves. I am starting in on the rocks, and since they're going to be reverse painted, I'm painting the layer closest to the viewer first. Um, and most I'm going to be doing the details of the sort of rock um, parts in between the glowing green stripes on them. And in order to do that well, I thinned down my paint quite a bit, because uh, otherwise it would just get too chunky. Modern American government buildings are often loosely patterned off of ancient classical temples, and they would have similarities if seen as ruins thousands of years from now, but that doesn't mean that their purpose or the cultures that built them are the same or even very closely linked. And we're closer in time to classical Rome than the first stone circle builders were to the last stone circle builders. Uh, so when talking about purpose, you really kind of have to talk about these monuments individually uh, or regionally to stand a chance in really figuring it out. I think my little stone circle is just a cozy place in the woods that feels kind of special. Yay, I'm finally working on the last rock. The little detail fiddly bits always look the best and I enjoy doing them to a point and then it, it gets to be work <laughs> but it should look cool when I'm done so that'll be nice
there we go. This will need a second coat in some spots, but the rocks are essentially done. I decided I do want some sort of area down here that's sort of like the ground, and I was debating putting the paint on the, the clear pane of glass, but then decided I love this green swirl, and it's green anyway, like grass, so I think I'm going to put the paint back here, which is the back layer of the stained glass. It's going to be at the very back part, and so it'll keep light from getting through, but you'll still be able to see the stained glass through it. And I don't like how these trees, you can see them through the swirly parts in the stones, so I think I'm going to scratch out parts of, of the trees as well. Now I just need to let that sit and probably do a couple more coats in order for it to really be opaque. Thank you so much for sticking around to see how this piece turned out. And here it is. Let me see if I can get a good shot of it without all of my lights. Kind of. <laughs> and the funny thing about this one is my favorite part turned out to be the trees up at the top. Um, I still love the way that the design in the stones uh, glows in the right light, but I'm gonna have to use these trees again because they just turned out so well and sometimes that happens when you're drawing and painting and creating things you think that one part of it is gonna be your favorite and then something else turns out to be the best part of the piece all right well thank you so much and I will see you in another video and please let me know in the comments below what you do to show your creative side bye